Andy Jolliffe. I'm a Communities Officer here at East Suffolk Council and I'm the Department Lead for Neighbourhood Planning. Neighbourhood Planning is an important legislative tool that helps give local residents a real voice in planning the future development in their local area. This video will give you a summary of neighbourhood plan legislation and hopefully give you an opportunity to make an informed decision and have a conversation with your other partners in towns and parish councils. Neighbourhood plans were introduced in the Localism Act of 2011 and their aim was to give local residents a greater say over planning development in their area. They're predominantly a planning tool, however there's significant amounts of community engagement that are re that's required all the way from beginning of the process right towards the very end. As of April 2022, we have 13 completed neighbourhood plans in East Suffolk and 28 that are currently in progress, so that's around a quarter of our complete towns and parishes. A report for government by the University of Reading in 2020 found evidence that neighbourhood planning helped improve design policy focused local priorities, for example ensuring suitable housing was available for specific societal groups. It improved engagement with local planning authorities and community attitudes to development may become more positive because of the neighbourhood planning process. Neighbourhood planning helps to inform local land use. It allows residents to have a greater say on where development is best suited and what that development looks like. It gives local residents a say in their community development. There is lots of community engagement tools and processes to complete from the very beginning all the way through to the referendum at the end. Neighbourhood planning is also really helpful in addressing issues that have already appeared. Neighbourhood planning can consider those issues and make considerations for that moving forwards so that we don't have the same problems in the future. Financially, town and parish councils benefit from having a neighbourhood plan. Their SIL receipts increase from 15% to 25% once uh, the referendum has been completed and the plan is made. There's a lot of community engagement to complete though uh, throughout the neighbourhood plan. Surveys, events, public meetings, all at different times in different venues, online and face to face. We're here to support with that community engagement, to provide advice and a critical ear if necessary. Neighbourhood planning is about working collaboratively between the councils and towns and parishes, but like all legislation, it has its limitations as well. It does not act as a tool to stop development. That's not in the spirit of the policy. All neighbourhood planning policies must be aligned with other planning policies. For example, the local plan and planning policy frameworks. It's not possible for a neighbourhood plan to be in contrast with those policies. Because each plan is based on statistical data, expert reporting and community engagement, they can all be different, however the process remains the same for each one. I think there was simply a feeling that the plan the size of Kesgrave ought to and, and should be equipped uh, to avail of the opportunity to have a bigger say in how planning decisions are reached. Um, and although a minor factor, there was recognition of the reward of automatically obtaining 25% of community infrastructure levy on development. Overall, um, I guess to have a representative document, something kind of tangible, with a degree of legal standing um, that expressed the opinions of residents as to what by consensus uh, was considered to be most important in the community. Uh, and finally, it, it is essentially a planning document, um, but we know even more today how important it is to consider planning in the context of wildlife conservation, biodiversity generally and leisure amenities. Um, Kesgrave is a heavily built up environment within what's called its settlement boundary, but it enjoys some great public open spaces uh, that were designed into the Grange Farm development, which is two thirds of Kesgrave. And it has walks in the country areas outside the settlement boundary all of which residents were and remain very keen uh, should be preserved. 
pretty well. Uh, we appointed a consultant and uh, the costs of this were all covered uh, by grants. Um, he had tons of experience in neighborhood planning. He guided us through the various stages and he advised us on what was likely to be accepted and more importantly, uh, what was not. Be open in your communications with residents about what your neighborhood plan can realistically achieve. A neighborhood plan is a planning document. It's not a panacea for everything that's wrong in the parish. Secondly, the resident questionnaire we used was a boilerplate version supplied by our consultant. With hindsight, we could have given more thought to tailoring some of the questions. A neighborhood plan must be positive about development in its wording, even if 90% of residents are against development. Next, um, I wish I'd read up earlier about the policies in the District Council's emerging local plan and the National Planning Policy Framework. Um, a few of our initial policy proposals fell foul simply of the fact that these were already something covered within the local plan. Be prepared to work closely with your district planners. At East Suffolk, they're good people who know their stuff. They were overbearing at times on minuscule details, but they guided us through the minefield of regulations and public consultations. They were supportive. And when the chips were down, they helped us overcome some of the obstinacy of the examiner. And I always felt they were on our side. And finally, um, keep everybody on council up to date, not just your committee. Our committee was made up of residents and councillors. I got hours to ratify everything as we went along. And I think as a result, uh, I believe they had a sense of involvement and ownership and it gave me a feeling I was being supported at every step and, and they have been fantastically supportive, it has to be said. Kesgrave's experience of the neighbourhood plan and working through it are unique to Kesgrave because Kesgrave is unique and different to elsewhere. However, that process remains the same throughout every single plan. Preliminary discussions need to be held between the town or parish and East Suffolk Council so you can understand exactly what a neighbourhood plan involves and what's required, who's able to support it and whether you're able to commit. At this point, speaking with East Suffolk Council officers is recommended so we can advise you further. It's vital to start getting residents engaged with your project and sharing their views and ideas early. All plans have to be voted for at a referendum, so getting people aware and involved at an early stage will bolster your support later on. East Suffolk Council have a statutory obligation to support and advise neighbourhood plan groups throughout their process and we're happy to do so. We'll ensure you're using best practice, answer any questions we can and ensure that your document is likely to pass independent examination at a later stage. This gives East Suffolk time to consult with any bodies that may be affected by the neighbourhood plan and its policies. By this point, you should have a fully drafted neighbourhood plan. The plan is then submitted to East Suffolk Council's planning team who will ensure that the plan complies with all the statutory regulations. Following on from the regular back and forth guidance, it's expected that there shouldn't be any surprises at this point. The plan is then publicised to allow anyone with an interest in the plan to make their views heard, followed by an independent examination. Only a plan that meets a set of basic conditions can be sent to referendum. The independent examination checks that the neighbourhood plan meets these basic conditions, such as general conformity with other strategic policies such as the local plan, isn't in breach or in conflict with any other regulations. Finally, a referendum is arranged by our electoral services team for all residents that are eligible to vote within the area that's affected by the neighbourhood plan. A result of more than 50% in favour of the plan must be met for the plan to be adopted. This video is just a brief summary of neighbourhood plans. We'd always recommend that when you're ready to start discussing one, you get in touch with us either at the communities team or the planning team at East Suffolk Council, and we'll take it from there.